Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Burlington House. Just to check first, can you all hear me satisfactorily at the back? Wonderful. Good. Well, it's lovely to see so many of you here um, for the launch of our new project at Cowscott Manor, about which we're all tremendously excited, as you might imagine. This is a wonderful opportunity for Cowscott and the society. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jill Andrews, and I'm currently president of the society. And in a minute, I'm going to introduce a number of short presentations about Cowscott and the society's vision for the forthcoming project. But before embarking on that, I just want to say a few words by introduction uh, to the society and to how we came to own Kelmscott Manor. The society is a charity, and also we're Britain's oldest learned society concerned with studying material culture of the past. Our first meeting was held in 1707 in rather less salubrious surroundings than here in a tavern in Fleet Street. We moved in here in, the, in 1876, and we currently have a membership of over 3,000 elected fellows. And our purpose is to undertake research and conservation and to communicate knowledge of the past to the widest possible audience. Now, as a consequence of this, from our earliest days, and particularly before the National Museums had been established in the 19th century, the Society was seen as an appropriate organisation to which to give important items from the past for safekeeping. We've got remarkable collections here at Burlington House, uh, not least of which are on the walls uh, in this room, if you look around you. And if you're interested, there are some catalogues around the room which tell you something about these remarkable pictures which were donated to us in the early 19th century. So in this context, Cowscott Manor and its estate came into the possession of the Society relatively late in 1962, under the terms of William Morris's daughter, May's will. We've cared for them ever since, with significant financial investment and an extensive programme of repair undertaken at the point at which we acquired the estate. And this um, slide here shows how the manor looked when the society acquired it in 1962. It was in a dangerously dilapidated state, I think I need hardly say, and in essence, we rescued the site a key part of the nation's cultural heritage and its contents from dereliction. And uh, this also shows repairs inside the house then and now. The manor was the summer home of William Morris from 1871 to 1896. And we know that the house and its surroundings were a significant source of inspiration for him leading, among other things, to his role in the development of the principles underlying modern conservation practice, his, his role in founding the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings, and his subsequent election as a fellow to this society in 1894. And here, top left, it's the only picture we have of Morris and May at Kelmscott, and um, they're sitting on a fence which is at the bottom left of the bottom picture. And at the top right is the Morris family and the Byrne Jones family. So it's very appropriate that through the society's ownership of the manor, we can demonstrate in a very practical way the importance of preserving the remains of the past and that we can share our knowledge of it with visitors to the site. Currently, we have approximately 20,000 visitors a year, and these numbers are greatly in excess of the numbers of visitors for whom current facilities were designed in the 1960s. And we are aware, too, that there are now opportunities to tell the story of Kelmscott in new and exciting ways, which can more fully highlight its significance and engage a wider audience. And it is for these reasons that we're so delighted to have been awarded a round one funding pass from the Heritage Lottery Fund, which will allow us to explore this potential and start to plan for a programme of essential future repa uh, further repairs. And in addition to the Heritage Lottery Fund, I should li like to thank now the following organisations for their support during the forthcoming development stage. That's Arts Council England, the Country House Foundation, the C.L. Lloyd Charitable Trust, the Aurelius Charitable Trust, the Architectural Heritage Fund, the Pilgrim Trust, and the Jack Lunder Foundation. It's already very gratifying to see how many people have been prepared to support us at the outset of this venture. So now I'm going to introduce our four speakers who are going to briefly tell you from their different 
perspectives. A bit more about Kelmscott and the Society's vision for the forthcoming project.